In November of 2000, my wife of 16 years asked me to move out of the house and grant her divorce. It was then that I discovered that life does begin at 40. Enough of this. This recycled NPR cycle babble crap makes me sick to my stomach. Let me tell you the story of a real tragedy. I was a really lucky guy. Two months after my ex-wife traded my 40-year-old ass in for two twenties, I reconnected with the love of my life from 22 years before and married her. For better or for worse, this is where my luck stopped. Don't get me wrong, I've got a wonderful job and a beautiful, intelligent daughter, and life is good. Well, good unless, of course, you count Arsenal. For those of you who don't know, Arsenal is a team in the English Premier League. I didn't even know they existed before January of 2007. Back then I loved football as a beautiful game. I was captivated by the passing and the movement, thrilled by the goals and the roar of the crowd. All that changed for me the day I met an African man dressed in a green cat in the hat hat advertising an Irish bar in Prague called O'Chase. On television was an Arsenal vs. Liverpool match. The football was amazing. Short passes, great triangles. The team in red, in this case Arsenal, had it all. They absorbed all the pressure that Liverpool applied in the first 45 minutes and then came out in the second half and dominated the game. I commented to my wife how much I was enjoying this. She replied, that's Arsenal. Everybody hates Arsenal. I should have let it drop there. I should have finished my pint, gone back to the streets of Prague and lost myself in the sounds of free Mozart. Instead, I reiterated my admiration for the team. She replied, I hate Arsenal. I've been a fan ever since. Upon returning home, I discovered that Arsenal had recently been the best team in England. I was thrilled. By sheer happenstance, I was supporting a winning football club. I felt like someone who by coincidence discovered baseball and started cheering for the New York Yankees. In reality, I hadn't chosen the Yankees. I had chosen the Mets. I should have known what was in store seven weeks after I started supporting the team. Arsenal were in a League Cup final against Chelsea. Now, the League Cup is not overly prestigious, but still, a trophy is a trophy. Arsenal lost two goals to one. I figured this was a momentary blip. The year before, they had gone undefeated in the league. Surely they couldn't have gone from riches to rags this quickly. That year, they finished fourth. The next year, they finished third. Then fourth. Then third. Then, well, you get the picture. It's amazing how the support of a single fan can change the fortunes of an entire team. Finally, in 2011, we, and by we I mean Arsenal and me, reached another cup final. I was absolutely overjoyed. Not only were they in the cup final, but we were going to be playing Birmingham. Birmingham was a team that was destined for relegation. The mighty Arsenal would have to prevail. We lost 2-1 to one on a goalkeeper error in the 90th minute. And the worst part wasn't that the team had absolutely blown a chance of a lifetime for a piece of silverware. It was that I had convinced my beautiful and intelligent daughter to also support Arsenal. I was crying on the inside. She was not quite so stoic. This unrequited love affair between Arsenal and myself has continued to this day. In fact, last year I visited London, home of the Arsenal. I was completely stoked. Not only was I going to be in my own personal mecca, but I was arriving on the day of the North London Derby. It is, without a doubt, the biggest day in Arsenal's season. And I, me, a fan who had loved them from afar for all those years, was going to be there. I arrived on Saturday full of expectation, only to find that they had moved the game to Sunday, the day that I was going to be on the Channel train to Paris. That day, they won five goals to one. Of course they did. Undeterred, I returned to London. Arsenal was scheduled to play Newcastle on Sunday. Now, Newcastle is not a great team, so I figured I could score tickets to the game. I would finally be able to see my heroes in person. 
they decided to move that game to Monday, the day that I would be flying back to the States. As a last resort, I went to the Gunners Pub, a local arsenal watering hole in North London, to watch the second leg of a Champions League quarter-final game. We were down four goals after the first leg and had absolutely no chance, but I figured it would be the only chance that I would have to actually watch a match with my fellow Gooners. We got along famously. Someone even offered to let me use their season tickets for the game on Monday. <sighs> we all agreed that we had no chance. A four-goal deficit is practically impossible to overcome. And then it happened. They scored a goal. And then another. And then the third. I was stunned. Finally, all those years in the wilderness were going to pay off. We were playing brilliantly. And I was there. We scored three goals in the first half and were absolutely dominating the game. It was only a matter of time before we scored one more and went through on the greatest comeback the world of football had ever seen. It was truly the greatest 45 minutes of my life. The final aggregate score was four goals for them, three goals for us. I was crushed, devastated. I'm afraid that night, I, like my daughter before me, cried my eyes out. Now, I'm a fairly big guy, and up until that point, I had never been kissed by a man. That night, I was kissed and hugged by several. Every single fan, and believe me, they were all very big guys, in that bar came to console the American who had come so far and received so little from the team we all loved so very much. Woe to be a gooner. This year, we're going to finish you guessed it, in fourth. But on May 17th, we are actually going to be playing in the FA Cup Final against a team that has barely escaped relegation. This is going to be the greatest day of my life. I know it. I feel it. What could possibly go wrong? No!